Welcome to the Conversations That Matter podcast from Uniform, the podcast that dives into real conversations that are happening in contact centers around the world. Here you'll experience exciting interviews with well-known thought leaders, hear compelling stories from industry experts, gain fresh insights on contact center best practices and more. So grab a beverage and tune in as we get real with Conversations That Matter. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Conversations That Matter, a podcast for contact center professionals. I'm your host, Randy Kassar from Unifor. And we have a great and really special episode today. I'm joined by Umesh Sashdev from Unifor. Uh, Umesh, welcome. Thank you, Randy. Um, I'm really excited about the conversation today with our special guest. And uh, I've decided to invite Mike Small, uh, who's going to be on in just a moment. So it's going to be a fun session. Yeah, you guys are going to have a great conversation. I'll be in the background, and, and you guys um, are, are ready for a great conversation. And you know, and Mike is, uh, is is very generous for giving us time today. So let's bring on Mike to the show. Hey, Mesh. Hey, Mike. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to Conversation for that matter. And for the folks who are, who are joining us uh, today, I have decided to invite my good friend Mike Small, who's the CEO of America's at Cytel. Uh, full disclosure, Cytel and Unifor signed a partnership uh, some time ago uh, to use our conversational service automation platform. But today's conversation, what it's all about, uh, is really to talk with uh, Mike uh, and learn how his company and what they're doing for Cytel Heroes uh, and how they're helping organizations around the world with their contact center. If anyone wants to learn more about the partnership, please check out the link uh, on the notes uh, and details about this announcement. But let's get this conversation started. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Amesh. I appreciate the time, and uh, it's great to see you, and it's great to be here. Absolutely. This is uh, the chance for our viewers uh, and me to get to know you a little bit better and what you do at Cytel. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a series of questions, if that's okay, uh, to get the conversation flowing. So the first one really is, for those who are unfamiliar, please talk to us about, with Cytel, what is your role and what is Cytel all about? Oh, that's, that's great. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that question. You know, first, let's start with quickly Cytel. Cytel is a team of over 90,000 associates globally around the world, which is mandated to really focus on every single connection that we are privileged to serve our, our, our customer's customer, delivering a great CX, a great client experience. We're obsessed about that and everything we do, uh, how we go about making that happen with great partnerships, how we go about making that happen with great people. And most importantly, from our standpoint, how we empower our associates to deliver that experience. You know, having 90,000 folks worldwide, globally connected, we wanna ensure that our experiences are uh, consistent throughout the world, but most importantly, individual emotional, a true connection. So empowering our people is everything. Uh, my uh, role is I'm chief, cheer, I'm chief cheerleader. You know, I get to, you know, post, uh, post COVID, hopefully get back on a plane and travel to wonderful places around the, the, the world. But uh, right now we're, we're, we're hunkered down like so many of us in our headquarters in Miami. I'm actually in my home office today, but we are still, um, firmly guided by our values and you know my values uh, for the company are behind me on the wall um, you know we we focus on building trust with one another working together you know truly being bold and most importantly wowing our customers so in the role of chief executive officer for the americas i try to embody our values and most importantly support our people grow great teams work with our clients to deliver a great cx experience Excellent. And, you know, Mike, in the time that I've had the privilege to come to know you and the rest of the Cytel team, this is a truly unique organization. And it's been a privilege for me to, to partner with you and work with you. Um, my next one is you brought this up that we, we are living in unusual times right now. The pandemic um, has just you know caused some major shifts in the way we live and do business. So in this new normal how has your business been affected and people and your customers' business? Uh, what's your commentary on the times we live in right now? 
Well, I, my first commentary is just my, 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 my sincere hope that everyone is safe. Um, you know, we, we are, we are people at the end of the day, we serve people and, uh, you know, COVID-19, I believe has impacted the globe, like nothing we've say, seen in, 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 in a very long time. Um, you know, decades, if not going back to, uh, you know, this is a crisis that has impacted all of us simultaneously. And, uh, you know, it's really stretched. It's really tested who we are as a company um, and who we are as a people. And, and when I think about, you know, how we as a company have responded, um, you know, I am so, so thrilled, so privileged to be part of this team. Um, this team is agile. This team is uh, tirelessly committed to CX experiences of our customers. So we've been able to respond, uh, most importantly, get our employees working at home. In many cases, about 85% of my organization is all at home, where our employees are still in centers around the world, ensuring that those centers are safeguarded and safe to come to work at and ensure that we're providing our experience, our, our, our clients, a phenomenal experience. Um, we've had to change our processes. And, and a big piece of that is technology. A big piece of that is quality. And, uh, and Unifor plays a major role in that. A big piece of that is security. And, you know, that's where we've invested millions of dollars over the last, uh, you know, three to four months is really focusing on those three pillars around a, an experience for at home. Uh, in terms of a people, how has it affected us? We are so connected uh, that we're used to global conference calls and video is mandatory in our, in our culture. But I miss my team. I miss being in the office face to face. I miss our customers face to face. And I'm sure you can experience and, and, and share that as well. You know, we're doing our very best leveraging the technologies and we'll always keep ourselves safe. Uh, and our customers safe, but there's definitely an element of uh, interacting, um, innovating, uh, challenging one another, face-to-face -face interaction that simply we do miss for sure. Our culture is so important to Cytel Group that face-to-face -face interactions. The last time my entire team was together was in uh, the uh, February time frame for our kickoff and uh, we all went to uh, Cartagena, Colombia and uh, we, we still speak about that. And usually we're together every month. So uh, that's the only thing that I would say uh, from a people standpoint, uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to hopefully a vaccine and getting back to some degree of normalcy post the uh, COVID crisis. Right, right. And Cytel, at Cytel, you have the uh, unique vantage point of serving customers across many different industries and many different countries in the world. Absolutely. How would you say just a snapshot of what's happening with your customers uh, around the world in this new normal? Yeah, yeah, great question. You know, I would say that it really does depend on the industry or vertical that we are supporting. So we're seeing significant growth in our banking, financial services, uh, uh, businesses around the globe. Uh, we're seeing um, significant uh, uh, growth and uh, ability to help support COVID responses and our public services or public sector teams around the world. But then we're having clients in the travel hospitality side that obviously have been impacted greatly. So, you know, the first aspect that we've looked at in every client interaction is empathy and ensuring that we are there to support them on their terms, how they need us. So if they need us to scale up, move around the world, um, launch a new product or service to help drive more digital online capabilities. We've launched over uh, 15,000 uh, bots in the last uh, 30 days, uh, last 45 days, just helping clients help capitalize on more of a digital channel to help serve their clients as opposed to, in some cases, traditionally uh, focusing on voice or chat or email. So these are some of the initiatives that um, our customers are asking us for. What I would say um, across all industries, the theme of digital adoption, digital transformation and acceleration is at an all time high. Gotcha. So Mike, shifting gears, you've been in this industry, you've been in this trade for, for a while. 
Uh, walk me through how you've seen the, the customer experience industry evolve over these years. It's a great question. You know, when, when I first came to the BPO side of the uh, our industry, I came from a traditional IT services and more of an application background. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the BPO uh, industry, I said, here is an industry that is ripe for transformation. And, and I, I made a career decision. It was, I want to be focused solely on BPO. And when I made that pivot away from purely IT or, or large IT or services firms into truly BPO focused, it was looking at holistically the end-to-end -end process, the front office, the mid office, the back office. And there's been, you know, some innovations that have started in the back office around automation, per se. There's been some innovation around bolt-on technologies in the mid-office. But the power of CX is the front office. It's knowing exactly what your customers' customers think of you. And the challenge for all of us is how do we automate, mine, ensure that we are completely connected into the data that we sit on today, which is exactly the power of any organization. What do your clients think of you? What do your customers truly say about you? Are you servicing them on their terms? And are they providing you feedback to get better? And if you are customer obsessed as we are, that is where you want to spend every waking moment of your day. So that's why I feel, you know, from a business process outsourcing perspective, Legacy, quote unquote, butts and seats. And I can't stand that term because today I feel most brands are absolutely aligned to the CX experience is everything. It drives P&L performance. It drives growth. It drives your innovation agenda. You have to be customer obsessed. And there's so many great companies with examples of that globally. And uh, we thrive ourselves on being one of them. What would you say is the biggest myth about the BPO industry? I think the biggest myth about BPO industry is it's all labor arbitrage. You know, and, and that really was historically a lot of the focus is how do we take cost out of our operations and how do we move work around the world in order to optimize labor arbitrage? And that myth still exists today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and frankly, I, I believe that myth will go away with companies like yours, uh, with companies like what well, Cytel Group, where we're just changing that narrative in every interaction we have with our customer's customer. Because the more we harness the data, the more we transform the process to drive, to drive either revenue growth, reduce churn, uh, make a process improvement that removes friction in terms of customer experience, the more we continue to do that and meet our customers on their terms when and how they want to meet with us, the more our industry will change into truly a CX transformed industry. Absolutely. And this leads me to uh, the topic of artificial intelligence automation. You know, the world we live in, Mike, um, uh, AI and automation are buzzwords. Uh, these are technology uh, words and hypes that have been created. But are they real? What's the impact of these technologies in the BPO industry from your lens? Uh, I'll use a great example of, of highlighting, are they real? You know, I, I just finished a client call with one of our brand new innovative, you know, footwear brands that are joining our portfolio. And, you know, this was the CEO of, uh, you know, the brand that was just doing a meet and greet executive to executive touch point with our teams. And it was so refreshing to see how each and every one of the leaders on the call spoke about how they are clients obsessed and how from the very beginning of launching this company, the brand, the product, the innovation, the people were everything. So specifically, one of the questions asked was, how do you create an emotional connection with our customers? The second question that was asked is how do you ensure your associate can provide great storytelling? 
<laughs> and and I just I was like, bingo, you know this is a brand I want to go all in on because they get it. It's about storytelling. It's about living your values, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, and translating those values and those stories to your end clients to create that stickiness, to create a connection, to create emotion, to create empathy. And we can't do that at scale without technology. There's just no way. So, you know, you think about going back eight, nine years ago, we would have a small team doing quality assurance and reviewing a certain percentages of calls and everything was driven by spreadsheets and KPIs. Mm -hmm. okay? Today, no human is touching any of that. Our data warehouse is completely automated using technology to drive speech, to drive customer sentiment, to flag areas of opportunity for our associates and to help automate the coaching experience. And, and it's amazing, we had this opportunity the other day, we can't do coaching, you know, round tables and huddles because we're all virtual now. So one of the things that we decided to do is, let's ensure we're using the same AI technology, the same automation technology, not just to record our associates calls with the end customer, but how about record our coaches and how they are interfacing with their teams. Because let's face it, you know, I don't know about you, my game is a little off in terms of just purely being virtual. I, I want to ensure that we are always on our toes. And the way to do that is to harness the technology that's available. And, and frankly, and you know this better than most, how far has it come? I mean, leaps and bounds over the last, you know, two to three years in particular. So. If you're not focused on embedding AI into all of your end-to-end -end systems to drive a, you know, a completely automated, but more importantly, uh, uh, an integrated experience for your people and your end customers, someone else is. That's a great answer. And I love the example of the customer that you picked. Uh, you know, Mike, there's been commentary over the last few years about this AI and you know how in the future with AI maturing and automation coming in, uh, that there may not be a need for the BPO industry. Mm -hmm. I am one, I sit on the opposite end of it. I like you believe that the BPO industry has evolved and will continue to evolve. And one that is at the middle of this entire transformation. So one who's leading one of the largest BPOs in the world into the future five or 10 years out, what would the BPO of the future look like? I think the BPO of the future is, is truly an integrated platform. And, you know, there, there will be consolidation in our industry. We, we do know this because there was a high cost in terms of, you know, entry into the BPO industry. That cost is only going to increase. Um, the sincere capital required to be a leading uh, provider in, in the BPO industry is significant. And if you're not investing 2X what you were investing 16, 24 months ago, you're gonna fall behind. And, and that's why um, the majority of our capital is going into proof of concepts, is going into technology, is going into um, our IT, our data analyst teams, uh, tremendous amount of investment needed to catch up to some of our clients in terms of how they operate, but in many cases help many of our clients catch up to where they need to be in the industry. So if you're an organization in BPO, you've got to be able to provide services in call center, services in IT, services in uh, data and analytics, services in learning, and you have to have a great people culture. And, and that's really where we're focused in terms of, you know, the future state or the future model. And I would add to that, that I do believe that front office, mid office and back office are able to drive efficiencies and effectiveness through the end to end process. So companies like ourselves working in partnership with both innovative technology companies, the real end to end value would be able to take that mortgage process from front office, mid office, 
back office, back to front office in a frictionless way, the way the client wants you to interface with them. And disruptors are out there. And we work with so many disruptive brands. And, and I love it because I get to see truly how if we were not in a legacy environment, how would we build something? And that type of design thinking, that type of innovation and speed and agility is, is, is quite refreshing depending on the industry. So being able to be welcoming of those ideas, being able to operate in a model that I, like, uh, you know, brand new disruptor to a traditional legacy, um, you know, financial services institution, you know, how are we going to be able to reinvent the CX experience together? And, uh, you know, that's going to be, you know, something that does not go away. To answer your question specifically, does I, do I think calls will continue to contract? Yes. Do I think that digital will always be the primary ch channel of choice? Yes. Do I believe that humans will have some form of interaction in that process? Yes. Will the human be augmented with technology? Yes. All of those have to integrate together, and, and that's why we exist. That's why you exist. I mean, that, that's fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. A few moments ago, you mentioned how you at Cytel are using technology, getting virtual trainers uh, to record you know, their trainings uh, for the agents. As the CEO in, in America is for one of the largest BPOs, uh, talk to not just Cytel's uh, thousands of contact center agents, but you know, even contact center agents who don't work at Cytel. What, how would you message them in today's era? What would be a coaching to the contact center agent to just keep excelling at this customer experience? You know, the first, the first thing that I would say to our, our, our most treasured asset, our people, okay, and those who are not with us in the industry is, you know, I, I said this in a recent uh, discussion around uh, uh, some of our most diverse leaders in the company got together and shared some experiences. For me, choose a company who you can be authentic, the real you. If you're not accepted for who you are, if you feel like there's just a little bit, you know what, these, these folks just don't, don't get me, you know? Look for a company that gets you. Look for a company where you can truly just be you. That's the first advice that I would give. The second is really take a hard look at their culture. And listen, we have transformed this company over the past four and a half years. Uh, my two founders, Olivier, and uh, Laurent Huberti came over from Paris. They located to Miami with us. They are obsessed and they are aligned to the values that I share. And working with people that are like-minded and aligned to culture and values is so, it's just, it's, it's critical. It's critical to the success of an organization. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. We don't care about titles. We don't care about you know, how long you've been with an organization, that's great, especially long tenured folks. We care about how are you um, feeling about what you bring to the table and how can we better support you to bring more? You know, so we spoke, we speak a lot about our associate experience our my associate experience max, where we have technology projects where we port and we connect into the collective genius of our associates. Tell us how to redesign the recruitment process. Tell us how to redesign the customer experience for one of the largest brands. Tell us what our marketing lingo should be. Tell us what it's like to work here and how we can make it better. You know, one of the things that they came back with our Max Insider community of over 2,000 associates, you know, is connect with us more. You know, get my schedule to a mobile platform. Let me do shift swaps. Let me be able to show you what my skills are. So if a project comes up, I can, I can put my hand up. Those are the types of ideas that you, if you're connected into the collective genius of your employees, what comes out of them when tapped is just gold. So that's what I would share with our associates. Make sure you're able to be authentic within the walls of your organization and make sure that you have a voice. 
That's great. That's great advice. Uh, shifting to, you know, a bunch of industries, as you and I both know, are seeing surge in call traffics. Uh, mm -hmm. And these are unfortunately also industries where the businesses have taken a hit, including retail, travel, and hospitality. Um, if you were meeting a customer service operation, operations manager in one of these brands today, what would be your advice to them, especially your learnings from other customers? Don't stand still. Don't stand still. Um, when you're looking at your operation today, whether you're in an internal captive or you're working through partners, do not stand still. You know, go and spend some time with your associates. And right now, I understand that that's difficult to do. You can't do hijacking and sitting right beside our associates, but use and leverage your technology to be as close as you possibly can with your associates. Because right now, what many customers are focusing on, depending on you know calls and arrival patterns and workforce management being um, either going through the roof or maybe reduction because of the the, the, the series of COVID-related uh, industry challenges, is this too will pass. So use this time. If you've been accelerated and you're one of those industries that are going through significant growth, Use this time as an opportunity to advance the agenda faster. And if you're in one of the industries that are impacted, take care of your people as absolutely best you can and use this time to truly look at transforming so you can come out of COVID stronger. And I know those are words, but it takes leadership in the, well, you know, I will make reference, this is not a, a customer of ours, but, you know, I was absolutely honored to see how Marriott, who's gone through a very difficult time with COVID, how their CEO handled communication to both shareholders as well as their employees and how they've been able to work through partnerships to help place some of their employees. Nothing is ever perfect. I understand that. But I know Marriott will bounce back, a iconic brand and in, in, around the world and an iconic U.S. company, you know, I root for brands like that. I root for, you know, as, as we come out, hopefully stronger post COVID that we will be able to uh, all recover. And uh, I think using the time now, while maybe it's a little bit more difficult to do some really innovative transformative uh, projects while, you know, volumes are low, you know, is the opportunity. Uh, so that's what I would recommend depending on the industry. Well, it's been a great conversation so far. Um, we moved to a segment of the conversation and it's a little bit of a game which we call what's behind the post. And what we do here is we bring up one of your recent social media posts uh, uh, and you know we follow you and we ask you what, it all, what it's all about. So here it is. Uh, now your agents deal with customers around the world, and some of them are delighted and happy customers, and as we know, some of them probably are not. But you came up with this initiative called the Cytel Heroes. Tell us what this was all about. You know, I, I was reminded through a, a, a mentorship, you know, early on in my career, the power of a thank you. And, you know, simply what Cytel Heroes is all about was just to give a sense of, you know, we went from roughly, you know, eight to 10,000 employees working uh, from a remote location to over 65,000 globally. And we did that in, in the space of two to three weeks. And that's a lot of testament to our customers, but also a tremendous effort from our associates worldwide whether it's our IT team, our PMO team, our quality team, our coaches, our associates, all of the operations teams globally, it was a monumental effort. And, you know, as, as we coined July coming out of some normalization and st stability in terms of running those operations and getting our customers back to, uh, uh, you know, levels where 
we felt we could just take a breath, take a moment and make sure that we recognize, you know, outstanding execution and outstanding, you know, outstanding work. And, you know, this was one of my favorite recognitions of our, our Cytel heroes. We, we, we did this by individual, every manager in the organization, every leader was asked to recognize individuals and share their story. And there's countless stories, but one of the posts from Chad, I, 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 re, I re-forwarded there because I just think it nailed it. It's, I'd like to thank all of our frontline associates. You know, they have families, they are scared. They are worried about the COVID uh, impact the same way we are. And, you know, they came through big time. Our associates were roughly 90, uh, 80 plus thousand. You know, we're up to 95,000. So we've welcomed a tremendous amount of new associates in. Uh, they, they, they are the, the heartbeat of Cytel. So just, you know, recognizing them and thanking them for all of their efforts was was really what Thank You Month was all about. You know, Mike, you're totally right. The difference between great companies and good companies is the culture. And this post of yours is a great demonstration of the culture that Cytel has and leaders like you are putting together. So good job, good job. I appreciate that. Well, now coming to the final segment of this conversation and to end on a fun note, this segment is what we call the rapid fire small style. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a series of quick questions. We can be as rapid or not as you like, or as long as not, but starting with complete the statement for me. My favorite part of the day is the morning. I start with the meditation. It's awesome. Last book you read. Essentialism. My uh, chief uh, revenue officer who joined the, uh, organization gave me essentialism by Craig McKinnon. Great book. Your mentor growing up? My older brother, Jason. Um, You know, it's always good to have an older brother that can beat you up and challenge you. And uh, we had lots of those, uh, lots of those experiences, but one that also could protect you and love you. And uh, yeah, definitely growing up, that was uh, my, my, my big brother, Jason. That's awesome. A public figure you look up to? Colin Powell. No surprise. Favorite way to decompress? Running. Used to be running. As, as you know, I, had, uh, I was over in the Philippines in uh, the February timeframe at our employee kickoff. And uh, uh, I had a knee injury. And uh, let me tell you, that is not fun as a runner, but uh, definitely running is my way of decompressing. I, uh, I miss it tremendously. I am doing fast walking and uh, accumulating way too much COVID-19 weight, but <laughs> this too will you know, come to a conclusion. I'm working hard to get back to my running. Well, um, I hope and pray that you'll get back to your running as, as quickly as you can. Thank you. Your favorite cuisine? I love Thai food. Love, love, love Thai food. Awesome. Favorite sports team? You know, I'm going to have to say this is a tough one because I grew up in Toronto Mm -hmm. and now I live in Florida. So uh, it has been a a long transition, but I have to say the Miami Heat. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have uh, a good good run going right now uh, in the bubble in Orlando. Uh, but uh, Miami Heat, and uh, you know, for uh, a kid growing up in Toronto, you got to say the Toronto, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, of course, absolutely. Your favorite vacation destination? You know, um, we uh, we we love Barbados. Um, I, I yeah, I, I'd like to say it's a, a, a second home, uh, but it is our favorite family vacation spot. Uh, we try to go every year, and uh, we have family. I have family in Barbados as well. So uh, we love the, the the country of Barbados. That is definitely the small destination spot. That's awesome. Yeah. And the final one, the the next big, big acquisition that you would do personally post-COVID? 
I have to say definitely, you know, I miss going and looking at, you know, a nice pair of jeans or, a, you know, some shoes, something definitely in the wardrobe space. Cause I don't know about you, you know, I, I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, we had this conversation cause I got to dress up a little bit and, uh, you know, but I tell you, you know, I do miss, uh, that interaction. And, uh, I think, uh, definitely a, uh, a trip to the mall for the entire family would be uh, something that we uh, we think through post COVID. Awesome, Mike. Thank you for the time. It's been a pleasure as always talking to you. You know how much I appreciate first our friendship and partnership. Uh, now, for folks who want to reach out or learn more about Cytel or connect with you, what would you say is the best way for them? Uh, best way to connect is uh, Cytel.com. You know, you can pretty much get any one of our experts, uh, myself. Uh, anytime, any place, we're an extremely nimble organization, extremely flat, so and very responsive. So, any way we can help, uh, we, we're always standing by. Mike, thank you. Keep doing the amazing work that you're doing, and get back to running as quickly as as possible. Thank you so much, Amesh. It was a pleasure. Really appreciate the time. You have been listening to the Conversations That Matter podcast by Unifor. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast player and rate and review to enable us to create relevant and valuable content for your business. If you'd like to learn more about conversational service automation, visit unifor.com. Have a great day.